Welcome back to Drinks and Chill. My name is Jill. This is Matt. And if you're new, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. back. Yeah. Exactly what I said. We don't want to not welcome the returners. Well, I did say welcome back. Yeah. And I said welcome to the new ones. Welcome to everyone. Welcome everyone. Yeah. Welcome to us. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is Highland Park. <laughs> so today, we're going to go ahead and do something different. Yeah. It's not different at all. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm curious to hear what this is. I'm actually going to be announcing this one. Okay. This is going to be Highland Park Cast Strength because mm -hmm. it's something that I can easily remember. Oh, yeah. The other ones I can't remember at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is release number three. So I know. Oh, so there's different releases. Yeah. This is the first one I've actually gotten to try. Oh, is it because you're always too late? Yeah, well, it's because I'm always too cheap. Oh, is this not uh, the cheapest one? No, it's not the cheapest one. I bought this bottle on sale for 80 bucks. On sale? Mm -hmm. Dang, yep. Not the cheapest. Yeah, not the cheapest. Or was it 70? It was either 70 or 80. But it was on sale. I do remember that. It was definitely on sale. Too much. Oh my god. You want to pour a little bit of this in yours? That's basically a serving, and we're not trying to drink a whole serving. Well, you're not going anywhere. Well, I'm not, but we're still going to drink more. Actually, that's pretty good. Okay. Let's just, yeah, we'll yeah. just leave it there. Okay. Yeah, we batch shoot these videos, so yeah, we're going to drink again after this one, so we don't want to have too, too much. Well, that is different. Super peaty, right? Hold on. <laughs> so the other Highland Parks, or at least the ones we've tried, which is the 12 and the Magnus. And I've tried the 14, I don't know if you have, but they are, they're peaty, but they're not like super peaty. This is probably the peatiest one. Well, I don't know, the Magnus was pretty peaty, but yeah. that was just because I couldn't get anything else out of that one. So this peatiness is a little bit different than the other ones. This one, I'm not smelling the smokiness of it, but then when you say peaty, that's what I'm smelling. It's more earthy than smoky. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm almost smelling like sand. Like it's it's sandy. Well, I'm smelling like uh, the husk, like either corn or wheat. Mm. Like if you like go into a field, that's what I'm smelling. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's, that's the same earthiness, but... I really like how this smells. You're right, it's not like your typical peatiness. It's, it's something different, but it's like a good different. For being as high ABV it is, I'm not really getting that sharpness from it. Like no. I'm getting a little bit, but it's not like what I think where it's at, it should be. Well, what I've noticed is that with the high ABV scotches that do have that peatiness, because you remember the Lagavulin mm -hmm. uh, cast strength that we had? To me, I felt like the alcohol impact on that one wasn't that much, but the smokiness was more. Yeah, big time. So I, I feel like with these, we get more of that than we do of the alcohol impact. Yeah. So behind all of that, there's a little bit of butterscotch. Is it butterscotch or honey? <laughs> Are we gonna have this conversation <laughs> again? <laughs> I think it's honey. There's almost like a floral thing going on too back there. You know those little flowers that, what are they called? Um, those like basic flowers that everyone like plants. Daisies? No, not daisies. Dandelions? No. Dandelions not a flower, it's more of a weed. It's more of a weed. It's a- uh, It's a nice weed. Oh, what are those things called? Ger geraniums? Those are those little like red and yellow flowers that they sell like at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. It's almost like that kind of smell. Does it look like, like just like a typical garden flower? Not really. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Chocolatey. I'm getting like a milk chocolate. I'll be right back. Okay. This is a geranium. Oh. Yeah, I never seen it. You've never seen these? No. Nope. Does it smell the same? Okay, it smells nothing like it. <laughs> you want to <laughs> smell it? I don't know how you got that smell. See, now we really have to do the whole test of <laughs> caramel, but butterscotch. But that really changed my senses. Smelling that flower? Yeah. There, There is some kind of floral smell going on here, yeah. though. They're smelling that flower, and like, this smells so much better. 
You know what I'm smelling? Like, like Coca-Cola. Oh, that's what I'm smelling. So the Coca-Cola, but like in that, that, that uh, icy form. Yes. That's what I'm smelling. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. 6.3 on the smell. Dang, 6.3? I, really, I really like this one. I with the 5.8. Okay. I okay. do like it. Yeah. Let's taste it. Okay. The cask strength well, that is sharp comes and into play. That ABV shows up on the taste. Wow. Still very earthy. That floral is there kind of in the background. I'm still getting the Coca-Cola, but it's like the Coke, it's like that flavor of the Coca-Cola you get after it's been sitting out for a little bit. And it's kind of gone a little flat. I'm not getting that. I'm getting a little, a little bit of that. The carbonation, that fizzle yeah. to it, but that's the sharpness, but it's kind of adding towards it mm -hmm. like a fizzle. That honey, I'm not getting as much as I did in the smell. See, on that sip, I did get a little bit of butterscotch. And that one, I got a little bit of honey. Honey versus butterscotch. Right? We're going to have to do that. Mm -hmm. And see, after having a few sips, I'm starting to feel like the warmth right here, like kind of going down. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I've had some whiskeys where like I take the sip and I get this immediately. Whereas with this one, I'm kind of just now getting it after taking like a few three sips. sips. Yeah. The initial part of it... I got a strong ABV and a strong peatiness to it, which is that smokiness. But after taking a couple of sips, I'm able to like put it in the back of my mind mm -hmm. as opposed to being in the forefront, which yeah. is nice. I'm not sure if that's because it's airing out a little bit more or if it's just my tongue getting accustomed to. Mm -hmm. A little bit of that chocolate comes through. I'm getting kind of what you had mentioned before, like that sort of corn husky type taste. Mm -hmm. Before we drink all of it, I'm going to go ahead and rate the taste. I'm going to give the taste a 5.8. I like the smell more, but the taste is still really good. Like, I would still drink this. Like, I would reach for this bottle. So, yeah, 5.8. I'm going to give it a 5. Okay. So, I do like it, but the peatiness that I got from the smell was different, but the peatiness I got from the taste was just that smokiness. And although it didn't go away for a little bit, I still taste it. Yeah. Finish. Finish. That peat lingers. It does. For a long time. But I'll tell you what else I'm getting. I got, on, I got on the smell is like that sandiness. I don't remember getting it on the palate, but I'm getting it now on the finish. I'm getting leaves. Maybe it's the corn husk. Or not corn husk, but like the husk. Yeah, I could see that. But then again, there's no corn in this whiskey because it's no. a single malt. But I mean, that taste is kind of there. Yeah. Just that outside yeah. leaf. Maybe this is aged in a bourbon cask, so that cornness is coming through. I don't know. But then they don't put the husks into bourbon. No. So I don't know. Let's rate the, the finish. finish and then we'll add some water. Okay. I'm going to go with a two. I'm going to go <coughs> with like a 2.2. .2. I do like the finish. Um, Just add one drop. One drop? Yeah, because it's a little bit. Okay. It's not much in there. I think for you, you're the person that's like, you're able to get past that pettiness. Mm -hmm. And I am too, but I still enjoy that taste. You want to smell it first? We don't have to like grate it, just. I feel like I'm getting a cinnamon now. I'm getting the honey a lot. It's very sweet. I'm getting spices, maybe like a paprika. Yeah, okay. I, I hit my tooth with the glass, <laughs> but I'm okay. <laughs> it's very black peppery. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's better or not because the smoke is gone. The peatiness is gone. It's not gone for me. It's still there, but mm -hmm. it's not like overbearing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't overbearing before, but it, it's still there for me. 
I don't know. I guess it's sandy. It's like very coarse. That's interesting. Like, I feel like I usually feel the alcohol like at the back of my throat, mm -hmm. but it's like in my nose. Hmm. The finish is much creamier and uh, like richer. Mm -hmm. Cast Strength release number three, Tasting Notes. A wild harmony of honey. Yes. Glazed citrus fruit. I didn't get any citrus at all. Crushed aniseed and smoldering heather peat notes. So we definitely got the peat. By bottling straight from the cask without adding water to reduce alcohol content, we present our whiskey in its purest form. Cask strength is the very essence of Highland Park and amplifies the key strands of our signature flavor profile. Casks have a huge influence on our whiskey as it slowly matures from our fresh new make spirit to award-winning single malt. Both the type of cask and the length of time that the whiskey matures in it play their part. For our cask strength series, I select and marry casks of different ages, looking for distinctive characteristics that will harmonize beautifully when brought together to create a whiskey for everyone who loves Highland Park as much as I do. Robust and intense, cask strength release number three delivers an extraordinary depth, complexity, and balance. I always like the Highland Park bottles. Yeah, their bottles are very intricate. But they're all the same. I like that dark red that they used for cask strength. I'm gonna give it a 2.5. 2.5? On the look. I'm gonna give it 2.5 too. Okay. Because I do like it. So our total scores will appear right here so that you can see how we've ranked this bottle. And then we'll go ahead and add this to our infinity bottle. Oh, before we forget. Before we forget. Oh my gosh, I thought I moved that out of the way. Oh my gosh, I'm just gonna keep going. Hopefully it makes it. All right, Highland Park Cask Strength is added to our 2023 Infinite A bottle, which is just a throw a bottle. So that is our review on Highland Park Cask Strength. This is release number three. Let us know down in the comments, what is your favorite Highland Park whiskey? Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know whenever we post and we will see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.